humans, I'm Yo Schiller, and welcome back to another part of my Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 100% walkthrough. In the previous part, I finished collecting all of the Korok seeds in the game. All 900 of them. Although you only need about 420 or so Korok seeds to maximize all of your inventory slots in the game, you do need all 900 in order to get Kestu's gift, a golden piece of poop. What does this item do? It doesn't actually do anything. The item is just for bragging rights. <laughs> But hey, I got it, so here's me bragging, woo! But you also need to locate every Korok seed in the game in order for the game's map to say 100% in the lower left corner of the screen. So there you go. Anyway, now that this tedious task is done, I believe that there's only one more thing I can showcase before I continue recording more DLC exclusive content. I'm pretty sure that I've done everything else in the game at this point, but there is one other mechanic that exists within this game, and this mechanic has existed since the game first launched back in March of 2017, and this Mechanic is Amiibo, baby! Woo! Yeah, Amiibo, these little toy figures. Nintendo used to sell a bunch of them, but now they're becoming less and less common. But Nintendo launched a huge line of Zelda-themed Amiibo to coincide with the release of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. In fact, Breath of the Wild served as the last game on the Wii U to utilize Amiibo functionality, and it served as the first game on the Nintendo Switch to use them. The functionality is the same in both versions of the game, of course, as they just simply allow a player to obtain random items each time one is scanned. But if I'm gonna scan these Amiibo, I should be in a more open place than this. It's a little cramped here. I advise that if you're gonna be scanning Amiibo into this game, you should go to a wide open area. Ah, now that's much better. Now, where was I? Oh yeah, compatibility. Now, technically speaking, every single Amiibo is compatible with this game, but not every Amiibo will do something special. If you possess any Amiibo, you can tap it on a Wii U gamepad if you're playing the Wii U version, or on a right Nintendo Switch Joy-Con if you're playing the Nintendo Switch version in order to scan it. You can also use a Pro Controller if you're playing the Nintendo Switch version, but with regards to Joy-Cons, only the right Joy-Con has the ability to scan them. Anyway, any Amiibo can be scanned. Most Amiibo will simply cause random items to fall from the sky. You can get some flowers, minerals, and food. So whether the Amiibo as a Mario figure, a Bowser figure, a Yoshi figure, or a Dark Pit figure, they'll all just provide something generic. You won't get something more fiery if you tap a Bowser amiibo, and you won't get something more dark if you tap a Dark Pit amiibo. However, if you tap a Zelda-themed amiibo, or in other words, an amiibo with these golden-plated bottoms that are from the Legend of Zelda series, then you'll get some better rewards. In fact, you can even get some rewards that are exclusive to Amiibo. Now, I want to be clear. Collecting these Amiibo exclusive items are not necessary for 100% completion in this game. Some items, such as certain outfits, may be exclusive to Amiibo, but due to the fact that Link can only hold so many outfits at a time, and due to the fact that outfits can be sold and repurchased at any time, I don't count collecting every outfit in the game as part of the completion process. With that said, I've already gone ahead and collected every piece of equipment that natively exists within this game, but since I need a few extra inventory spaces in order to complete the DLC for this game, I will not be collecting every single piece of Amiibo specific gear. So while tapping most Amiibo just makes random items fall from the sky, tapping a Zelda themed Amiibo will cause random items to fall in addition to a treasure chest. The treasure chest contain a wide variety of items and these are generally more useful than the ones you'd obtain from any other Amiibo. So rather than just some flowers or some food, you can get weapons and bows and whatnot. And these treasure chests are the only ones that can contain Amiibo specific gear. With that said, what are these pieces of Amiibo specific gear? Well, you can typically get gear that makes Link resemble his appearances in other games. For example, if you tap a Toon Link Amiibo, you have a chance of unlocking the Cap of the Wind, Tunic of the Wind, and Trousers of the Wind. This outfit would make Link better resemble his appearance in The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. Whereas, if you tapped an 8-bit Link Amiibo, then you'd have a chance of unlocking the Cap of the Hero, Tunic of the Hero, and Trousers of the Hero. Basically, these outfits would have a color palette that better resembles Link's 8-bit amiibo counterpart. They're fun additions, but they don't really do much other than aesthetically change you. There are a lot of Zelda-themed amiibo, and they are the ones that you are currently seeing on the screen. For simplicity's sake, I've gone ahead and grouped certain ones together, as they will often offer similar rewards to one another. For example, the Smash Bros. Link amiibo is essentially the same as the Twilight Princess Link amiibo, and the Smash Bros. Zelda amiibo is essentially the same as the Breath of the Wild Zelda amiibo. But let's start with the most interesting amiibo for this game. Wolf Link. This amiibo was released back in 2016 alongside the Wii U title, The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess HD. If you use the amiibo with Twilight Princess HD, based on how well you performed in that game, 
your Wolf Link amiibo will have more power in Breath of the Wild. Thanks to Gerard the Completionist, I was able to temporarily borrow his Wolf Link amiibo and tap it into my own game. Tapping this amiibo causes a wolf to appear, and he'll aid you in battle. I believe that if you don't really do anything prior to tapping the Wolf Link amiibo into this game, the amiibo will start off with three hearts of health, but since Gerard has been using it frequently, I have many, many more hearts than that. But okay, the Wolf Link amiibo is a bit of an exception as it summons a sidekick. Let's talk about the unlockables. In this first set of amiibo, you have a chance of unlocking the Twilight outfit. This set of gear will allow Link to better resemble his appearance in The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. In this second set of amiibo, you have a chance of unlocking the Wind outfit. This set of gear will allow Link to better resemble his appearance in The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. In this third set, you can get the Time outfit. This gear will allow Link to better resemble his appearance in The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. In the fourth set, if you tap the 8-bit Link amiibo, you can get the Hero Outfit, which, as I previously stated, will allow Link to better resemble his original 8-bit sprite. There's also a special Sky Outfit in conjunction with the Skyward Sword Link amiibo, and you can get Fierce Speedy Armor if you use the Majora's Mask Link amiibo. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get any footage of these, but they exist, and they're pretty cool. Now, those are the special Link figures that were released to celebrate the anniversary of The Legend of Zelda. This next set of amiibo contains the figures that were released alongside the Breath of the Wild at launch. However, they don't provide any exclusive items. While the Link Horseback Amiibo will occasionally give you a horse, bridle, or saddle, these Amiibo will usually just give you bows, arrows, and shields. They provide no special outfits. On the topic of horses, though, sometimes tapping an Amiibo will cause the legendary horse Epona to appear. Epona has wonderful stats across the board, and she is just an elegant beauty to behold. You can register Epona at a nearby stable, and that way, you don't have to tap an Amiibo every time you want to summon her. So I went ahead and did just that once she was summoned into my game. And lastly, there are the Champion Amiibo, Urbosa, Rivali, Mifa, and Daruk. These Amiibo each provide a rare helmet that can provide some sort of resistance. For example, tapping Urbosa's Amiibo has a chance to give you the Va Naboris Helm, which provides shock resistance. Rivali's Amiibo has a chance of providing the Va Meadow Helm, which has cold resistance. Mifa's Amiibo has a chance of providing the Va Ruta Helm which has a speed up bonus, and Daruk's amiibo has a chance of providing the Va Rudania helm, which contains flame resistance. And otherwise, that's about it when it comes to amiibo compatibility with this game. I got some unlockables, but I didn't get all of them. You can tap the amiibo once a day, and if you really want to get those unlockables, then you just have to keep tapping them each day. Their main purpose is so that while you're randomly playing the game, maybe you want an item that can heal you or aid you in battle, so you reach over and you grab an amiibo and you tap it and you get some random stuff. They're by no means a necessity for beating the game or completing the game, and they're more of a nice bonus in case you happen to have any figures lying around. And yeah, it's a nice touch that you can get some cool costumes, or even a horse. So I've got Epona registered into a stable, and I used a wolf a little bit, but for the rest of this walkthrough, I don't think I'll be using any additional Amiibo. I just wanted to go ahead and showcase their uses in this part, especially since towards the beginning of this walkthrough I said I would make an Amiibo showcase video, and now I've finally gone ahead and done so. So for now, that wraps up this part of my Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 100% walkthrough, and I'd like to thank you all for watching. I hope to see you all next time in the next part when I really start to dig into more of the extra downloadable content for this game. Bye-bye, humans! Whoosh! Hey everyone! If you enjoyed what you saw and want to see more, be sure to click the subscribe icon underneath the video. Be sure to click on the bell icon to be notified when a new video is out. Also, one of the best ways to support me is to follow me on Twitter. On there, you can see announcements, updates, and previews for all of my upcoming content. My tag is at Rubio Schiller. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you all in future videos. Whoosh!